Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum and I'm here today at the Rock Island Auction Company and we're taking a look at this OA-96 pistol, which is a perfect example of uh, how people will inevitably attempt to find ways around any new law, uh, whether it's firearms law or any other law. So uh, to start at the beginning of this story, really the reason that this exists is in 1993, a company called Olympic Arms came up with this neat new thing. They came up with a way to give you an AR-15 with a side folding stock. Now, traditionally, this had been impossible because the AR-15 has a nice long bolt carrier and then it has a recoil spring and buffer that extend back inside the butt stock. So there's a buffer tube that comes out the back of the receiver and you can make like a collapsing stock AR-15, which where the stock can get as short as the buffer tube is, but there was, before this, there hadn't been any way to actually fold the stock because the buffer tube can't fold. That spring doesn't fold. In addition to this allowing you to have a folding stock, it also meant you could make a pistol version of the AR-15, which is in itself a workaround. Um, when the National Firearms Act was passed in 1934, uh, as it was originally written, uh, it would have prohibited handguns or it would have regulated them the same way that it currently regulates machine guns. And they figured, well, we have to have, well, there, there's a loophole here. What if someone just gets a rifle and cuts it down to the length of a pistol? So they included language in the National Firearms Act to prohibit or regulate in the same way short-barreled rifles and short-barreled shotguns. And then through some lobbying, the handgun section of that law was removed before it was passed. But they never got rid of the sections about short-barreled rifles. So we have kind of a, a unique situation here in the United States where you're allowed to have a rifle and you're allowed to have a pistol, but you're not allowed to have basically something in between. If it's got a short barrel and a buttstock, it's controlled like a machine gun. And for this reason, there have always been people who like, well, I want an AR-15 with a little tiny short barrel, but it can't have a buttstock, so we'll get a pistol version of it. Um, and in recent days, this has uh, evolved through the, the arm brace thing, which we don't need to get into today. But Suffice to say, there was also a market for AR-15 pistols, and what Olympic Arms did also allowed them to make a pistol version of the AR, which is basically this. Now, the way they did this was by actually moving the recoil spring up into this tube uh, above the top of the receiver. Uh, it Mechanically, it's really kind of a clever thing. And they did this in 1993, which is like almost the worst possible time that they could have, because the very next year, in 94, uh, the assault weapons ban was passed in the United States, and all of a sudden, um, a gun like this became considered an assault weapon and was legally prohibited from being manufactured. So Olympic obviously didn't want to just fold up and go away, and people still wanted to get the guns. In fact, people wanted them even more now that they were more heavily regulated. So Olympic took some time, and uh, in July of 1996, this was approved by ATF as not being an assault weapon. Um, and you might be wondering how it does that. It's got a 30 round magazine here, it's got a pistol grip, it's got no butt stock, it's got a flash hider. Well, the trick here is this doesn't actually have a detachable magazine. Ah yes, JB Weld, used by nothing but the finest purveyors of precision engineering. Uh, there are receiver markings. It's got a 1996 prefix on the serial number, Cal 223, model OA96, made by Olympic Arms out of Olympia, Washington. Now the other thing to note here is uh, they have actually gone through and welded the magazine body into the receiver there. There is no magazine release button. Uh, they just simply didn't mill that out on the lower receiver. And then they have liberally filled the gap between the magazine and the magazine well with what I assume is JB Weld or something similar, some sort of epoxy-like adhes permanent ad adhesive. And presto, it's not, quote unquote, an assault pistol. Uh, the definition of, of an assault pistol was initially predicated on it has to be a handgun uh, with a detachable magazine, which then had uh, several specific features or some, you know, some of a list of features. Well, this is no longer a detachable magazine, therefore it can have all of the features that they want, which included things like a barrel shroud, a, uh, a flash hider, that sort of thing. Now, you may be wondering, that's, that's all fine and good, and in fact this got to have a 30 round magazine, because as long as it was a fixed magazine, the law didn't say anything about how many rounds it could or could not hold. 
The question is, of course, how do you actually load it? Are you supposed to like get in here and stuff rounds in or, or what? Well, the answer lies in, in looking at the fact that there is no takedown pin on this either, which should be right there. There's a front pin, but no rear one. And instead, we have a button on the back here. When you push that button in, whoop, the whole thing pivots open. So that button controls a little latch right there. And they have added this tapered plunger to the back of the receiver. And presto, that locks it in place and allows you to pop it open. Once it's open, then you can manually reload this using individual rounds, or you could probably, I, I suspect, you could make a stripper clip guide sort of thing that would sit on there and allow you to load it that way. Uh, once it's loaded, just snap it back together and it's ready to use again. Now, some people are going to note that uh, there's no forward assist on this. That has nothing to do with the assault weapon or, or lack thereof nature of the gun. Uh, this has to do with the actual conversion uh, to use this separate recoil assembly. Now, I detailed this on my video on the OA-98. So if you want to see how it works, take a look at that video. I pull the whole thing apart. But basically, they cut the back end off of the bolt carrier. So there are, you can see the serrations right here that the forward assist would normally engage on. Usually you would then have you know, a, whole, a couple inches of those serrations on the back end of the bolt carrier. That back end doesn't exist anymore. This would do nothing. So they just plugged it and they used it as a sling attachment point. The charging handle, you'll see is not back here. The charging handle is now up here. Like so. There we go, lock it all the way back. They did put a nice flash hider on it, and that's a good Vortex flash hider, or, or appears to be. So the OA-96 here would only last a couple of years, not because it was prohibited, but of course because what people wanted was not this fixed magazine thing. People wanted a 30-round magazine, be able to take the mags in, take them out, replace them. And uh, while this was on the market, Olympic Arms was working on trying to come up with something that would do that. And in 1998, they in fact did it. They, had, they introduced the OA-98 uh, pistol. And what it did was take advantage of what I suppose is a loophole in the assault weapons law, not really a loophole, um, the, the technical definition of an assault pistol in the law. Uh, one of the components was weight. And if the gun weighed too much, that counted against it. Well, Olympic came up with a version of this where they skeletonized the living bejesus out of everything and brought the weight under that limit. Um, I'm sure the people who wrote the law didn't anticipate that it would be possible to do that, but Olympic did. Um, and we actually have a video on the OA-98 as well. So if you're interested in this, you should definitely stick around. There'll be a link at the very end of this video uh, where you can see what they did with the OA-98 because that's the next step in this same family. Now, if you would like more information on this one, specifically the 96, um, Rock Island's catalog page has their pictures, their price estimate, everything you would need to know about it. Uh, and you can reach that by way of ForgottenWeapons.com, which is linked in the description text below. Thanks for watching.